Yeah, they're lining up. Well, they're excited. Welcome back to the Sons of Mjolnir, guys. Thanks for tuning in. If it's your first time, thanks for being here. I'm Gorgon. I'm Fat Thor. I'm Cap. And today, we're going to be having our long-awaited symbiote discussion. We are two volumes, that is 10 issues, into the brand new run from Ram V and Al Ewing that takes place after Donnie Kate's incredible run that started in 2018. It's been a wild year getting through these first two volumes, but before we jump all into that and give you all a recap of what's led us up until now, we're going to answer a couple questions from Twitter. Okay, Brother Ooh. Thor, do you have a favorite question out of today's today's question list? Honestly, I don't know if I have a favorite. They're all really good. <laughs> Everyone really came with some real interesting ones. I will. I gotta. I guess I gotta go with um, which one? Okay, so from Grimace, from our good friend Derek, it says. I mean, this is a pretty simple one, but it's fun. I think it'll be fun to discuss. It's just uh, if you could pair with any sim, who would it be? And I don't know, like I said, I think that's an interesting one. And there's so many different Sims out there and different really personalities. Are. So I, I want to hear, especially Gorgon, I want to hear what Sim you would bond to. Because I feel like my answer is like super boring just because I just I'm not as knowledgeable as you. So I would love to get your take on that. I instinctually want to say Venom because I love I love <laughs> I love our guy, right? Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I gotta say, sleeper. If I'm being honest, um, sleeper. I, I is felt one like of the you most, were gonna say that. <laughs> sleeper is one of the most recent symbiotes. For those of y'all who don't know, first appearance was in a comic called First Host. Um, it's a little mini on it, and sleeper upon birth immediately just lobotomizes this warrior from outer space who who's trying to kill Eddie and like kill the symbiote and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And then he just pilots this warrior's body through space as, <laughs> as like an infant, right? Just a spawning symbiote on this crusade to, to find home and, and search for answers among the stars. No, no active host to communicate with, just riding a body, going to war, being a hero. Uh, currently, after the events of Extreme Carnage, is bonded with a veteran named Hank. But Sleeper has uh, chemokinesis. Sleeper can make any chemical it wants come out of its DNA to just to use against its enemies, whether that's napalm, mustard gas, acid, whatever. Uh, it's just they're at their arsenal and disposal. Their Which camouflage is, so is better than Venom's. I, they're just an absolute unit of say, a weapon. What, what a cool-ass power, right? I, right. <laughs> I, it, it would have to be Sleeper for me. Yeah, that's dope. Cap, what about you? What sim would you bond with? I was going to say Sleeper too, but I okay. feel like I have to have another choice. Now. Um, <laughs> hey, we're, we no, can't man, all be Sleeper. Everybody sleep can vote Sleeper. <laughs> Recognize the goat. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'd probably go Sleeper, to be honest. Hey, yeah. um, it seems more considerate without having a separate agenda to the rest of the symbiotes. Mm -hmm. And you, you know be I mean? a cat. Yeah, I love cats, man. <laughs> Bro, cat in yellow and black would look sick. I'm just saying. Oh, I like it. I like it. Yes, let's go. Kind of like the Midnight Suns. Yes. I like it. I'm going to break the cycle here, and I'm not going to pick Sleeper, although probably one of the coolest ones out there. I'm going to go, I'm going to go Toxin. And I don't know why I'm going Toxin other than he looks freaking cool. And I think that he, his design is dope. So. <laughs> oh yeah. Thousandth of their line, you know, I, uh, I think it was Jared Webb um, on Twitter. If I remember, I asked, uh, asked us who we thought would pair best with a writer, um, meaning ghost mm -hmm. writers. And oh. yeah, I'm going to okay. take it a step further Okay, um okay. then that i would say for me in my humble opinion on it i think the newest symbiote silence would pair incredibly well with kushala Ooh. the spirit writer yeah i, I like the spirit that. writer who can go in between multiple planes paired with the symbiote who has the ability to cut off other symbiotes from the hive and communicate through old hives make new hive minds like yeah nah that would be twisted yeah i am 100 percent on board with that <laughs> i like it i like it 
That's pretty cool. Yeah. Honestly, I don't think I have a better one than that. <laughs> I, I thought about that one for about an hour yeah. last night. Sat up watching a show just thinking about, crap, who would I pair with who? Yeah, that's <laughs> really good. Like I said, I don't I don't think I have a better answer. I feel like anyone that I would give is boring. <laughs> I Well, I felt I'm... like it, it was gonna be you know venom and blaze right like mm-hmm. i seems like the obvious solution that's, that's exactly what i would say but i feel like again that's kind of a obvious kind of boring answer <laughs> it's on the nose yeah exactly I'm on the very, nose. yeah i'm very out of my um out of my field on ghost riders so i have i'm mute on this one <laughs> perfect i love it I love it. Although I would love to see, uh, forget like like Cap said, I'm not a Ghost Rider expert either. But uh, the dude with the car, Robbie, right? Yep, Robbie Reyes. It would be sick for him not only to have a symbiote, but for a sim to get in that car. Ooh, baby! Scream! Ooh! Screams already used to being protected by health from Hellfire right from running around with andy benton uh to the best we know scream is dead but tinfoil hat moment for the end of the episode oh. i think scream can come back <laughs> oh so, save I'm, it I'm save it saying, i'm just saying <laughs> scream yeah. what other good questions do we have from the twitter polls uh let's see here someone i can't remember who asked us to decide if we could pair a symbiote with anyone who's a spider person or someone from the Avengers currently, yeah. So, would it be? so that's coming from our homie. Uh, pr- forgive me if I pronounce this wrong. Arch Archit Archit. Yeah. Uh, at so- at Song of the East. So he says, what character not affiliated currently? They can be past members, but not current within the Avengers or Spider Fam. Would you like to see bond with a symbiote? And which symbiote would you like to see them bond with? Which that is How a great you question. You read a lot of Avengers. What would you like to see? Honestly, I mean, again, I feel like with all this stuff, I'm like coming with like basic kind of lame answers. But I mean, if I'm being honest, if I'm being honest, any one of them being like, I guess you could say venomized is like super cool in my mind. Like when they did that whole venomized line with the covers and all that, I just love that. Like, I think that's like the designs were super cool. But if I had to pick like a specific one or two, I I might, I might have to go Black Panther, T'Challa. Ooh. I, I think T'Challa as a sim would be sick. And I think like T'Challa, not only it would be just cool for him to, you know, have a symbiote. I think he's smart and powerful enough, if you would, to be able to control <laughs> that symbiote, like uh, much like how Eddie Brock does. Like, I think he would be able to bond with one very I well agree. and like not be overtaken by it. So I think T'Challa would be a sick ass host for a sim. Did you like know it. that we have actually <laughs> had a Black Panther who was bound to a symbiote? Who? Tell me. Yep. Tell me more. Um, her name was Ngozi, uh, if I think I'm pronouncing that right. I can't remember where it's from, but I've shared this on Twitter before. Ngozi was an interim Black Panther, an absolute genius. Um, who stepped up when there wasn't one at the time um, Mm -hmm. and and wore the mantle, but also ended up somehow bound to a symbiote um, and used the the combined powers of both to try to help protect their tribe. Oh, shit. I'm I'm guessing this is before T'Challa and all. Like, this is the... Yeah, if I remember right, it's in an alternate timeline or different universe or whatever, and either T'Challa's dead... And she's interim between T'Challa and Shuri or mm-hmm. in between T'Chaka and T'Challa. I can't remember exactly yeah. how the timeline lines up on that. But yeah, she she was bound with one and did crazy like at the time, like what looked like dragon stuff with the symbiote. It was, yeah, it was kind of nuts. Dude, yes, that sounds that so cool. sick. And I mean, I would not put it past like, I mean, for a sim to be in Wakanda, especially like back in those days, like back in the back in the day, I, been that's around. totally plausible to me you know mm-hmm. that the wakandans had some kind of interaction with symbiotes like you said they've been around much much longer than we know thanks and i think papa burgundy if i remember right asked us uh if 
how we felt about Lee Price. If we think Lee Price mm -hmm. got what he deserved, if we think his character should have been done different, if people miss Lee Price, <laughs> um, do you guys want to answer that or should I just answer that? <laughs> well, I, I say I'm going to come off the gate right now and you're going to have to, uh, I'm going to expose myself a little bit here, but you're going to have to refresh my memory on lee price so lee price is the dude who got who eddie killed in prison in uh kate's run right or like Close. did he kill him or just beat the shit out of him i can't remember Close. that was cletus or not boom nailed it it was cletus oh, okay not okay. eddie um and that was at uh in the beginning of absolute carnage with it carnage oh yeah, cletus yeah absolute is, carnage made itself appear to be eddie brock mm -hmm. is in prison um, and yeah. what's happened is is Lee Price has tattooed the Venom logo all over their body mm -hmm. and and kind of made this group of goons and stuff in prison that kind of follow him around, think he's the shit. Uh, and he calls himself Venom in there, right? And uh, which is funny because Carnage just reaches in his body, grabs his codex, which is attached to his DNA and just rips that shit straight out. It drops his body on the floor and walks off. Um, like a sick. god, I beautiful. Dude, I, can't, um, I know we're gonna get into it into this episode, but I I love Carnage as a character. <laughs> like he is one of the most menacing like villains I think in comic books or media in in general. Like he's just so good. And for you listeners and viewers out there, if y'all aren't reading the Carnage series that ties in directly with the symbiotes by Ram V, who's also writing this you should it's it's so good right now yeah. um lee price has a long complicated history i guess with with the symbiote and when i say complicated i mean he's a douchebag about it um he like forcibly acquired uh uh venom he blasted mania off of andy benton the teenager found a group of thugs to gang her in an alley use sonic blasters to blast the part of the Venom symbiote that became Mania that was attached to her off of her and then took it in him and then like separated off parts of him for others to control them. Um, he was manipulating it that way all to try to do a bank robbery against like one of the, the four families or the five families. And then Felicia Hardy's involved because she's a robber. And then like Spider-Man's involved and Flash Thompson's involved. And this story is called Venom Inc. For those who want to read it um, by Dan Schlott. Um, yeah. And it's Lee Price is just a douchebag. Um, I guess to answer the question, <laughs> no way around the, it. Most, I, I, most of the symbiote community, I feel like, doesn't like Lee Price. I think if somebody tells you that their favorite host of Venom was Lee Price, it's a red flag. I Leave say that major game, red flag. Run, <laughs> major red flag. Run for the hills, right? <laughs> um, I, they're going to be super controlling, abusive, and toxic in that relationship, and never recognize where they're wrong. Like, get out, run for the hills. I, for me, I think it's great that occasionally bad people have something bad happen to them. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think Agreed. every character needs redemption or fleshed out. I Lee Price has done nothing but piss people off since he came about on the scene and been an absolute douche canoe, and he finally got ganked. I Yeah, I maybe it's the carnage in me, but yeah. sometimes <laughs> I like seeing bad people have bad things happen to them. And yeah. you know what? He's a bad person who had a bad thing happen to him, and we all benefited yeah absolutely and i totally agree with your point too of and i think a lot of people kind of fall into this I don't, I don't necessarily want to say trap but like you said not every character or villain needs redemption or not even redemption but like i don't need to sympathize with every villain like to at least in my opinion the best villains to me are there is no reason for what they do they're just bad they're just eat like carnage like we we're talking about carnage is a good example i think you know like yeah you could be like oh well you know as a child he you know you get like a little bit of his childhood and whatnot but in my mind it's just what makes carnage so scary and like such a good villain is like you were saying he doesn't need redemption he doesn't have redemption he's just bad he's bad he's evil and to me like i don't want to see you know his redemption or anything like that i want him to be evil because you know to me that's what he is well it's so, like red skull right would yeah. they redeem mm -hmm. red skull cap definitely not yeah, yeah. Definitely exactly not. it's a like um, the characters make um make for a better villain against the hero too like mm -hmm. it, was, it makes it harder to defeat the villain if they just don't have any remorse at all i agree 
And yeah. speaking yeah. of villains with no remorse, that's a perfect segue into today's episode on symbiotes. Starting off on the ends of King and Black is what you guys need to know before you pick up Ram V and Al Ewing's Carnage run. Now, Donnie Cates, for those of y'all who haven't read Quick Recrap, did what we are considering like the magnum opus of symbiote stories, right? The man, It's the bar right now, for sure. It is the absolute top tier metric. What's going on with my lighting all of a sudden? <laughs> You're glowing, um, bro. Right? I'm <laughs> I'm glowing. You got yeah. what's look. happened. <clears throat> you look uh, an- that's a new angelic. One. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. <laughs> I don't know what it. Um yeah. But Donnie Cates basically made what is is the 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 mark of perfection for symbiote stories. One of the craziest villains that led us here, and that's Null and his impact on the current run. For those of y'all who haven't read Donnie Cates' run on Venom starting in 2018, we are considering it the magnum opus of where comic books are for Venom comics. It, it's changed the game for symbiotes and the lore it's added, everything it's interwoven. The farthest back I'm going to take you guys is right at the end to King in Black. Which and if is you haven't the- read it, and I'm sorry to cut you off, if you haven't read it, stop this episode right now and go read it right now. Don't even finish this episode until you went and gone and read Donny Cates Venom. Go ahead, Gorgon. Just had to it just had to put that out there. All right, bro. You absolutely have to. <laughs> That's fair. Um, but it's an incredible run, and, and the King in Black event deals with Eddie Brock conquering the god of the symbiotes, Null, right? And and in doing so, he's had to step up and feel responsibility to the hive. The hive must always have a king in black, someone to lead it. So he steps up, he he frees a bunch of the symbiotes from the control of the hive, right? Giving them a little more interdependence um, with it all. And at the end of it, passes on Venom to Dylan, uh, Ven- his son. Venom goes on to Dylan to save his life, right? I, Venom isn't just a symbiote, it's who Venom is with Eddie Brock, and it's who Venom is with Dylan, right? I It does have a name as a Clintar, which we never learn. Dylan so far is the only person in Marvel that we know of who's heard Venom's true name in its native tongue. And it was so beautiful that it made Dylan cry at the sound of it. I, I find that fascinating. Um, but it's it's a great run. And like I said, it ends with him taking up the mantle and becoming this all-powerful god. In between that and this current run, we get a little mini mm. called Extreme Carnage, which changed the game leading forward. Um, It showed us Sleeper pairing with Hank, as I mentioned earlier. Um, It showed the death of Scream and the birth of a new symbiote called Silence. Um, It showed us Toxin's new host, Bren Walters, Waters, Walters, can't remember on that. Um, A young kid as well who's a host. and, And this defeat of Carnage. And it starts this spiral where Carnage has a host, but then no longer does. Carnage absorbs this S. What do they call it? Uh, it's this suit um, that uh, Iron Man's running. Estremis. Uh, I can't remember. Extremist. This, there you go. Extremist. Yeah, extremist. Um, yeah, yeah. And he he <clears throat> absorbs this extremist suit armor that's built with nanotech and part of a null dragon. Um, because Iron Man thought, yeah, why not infuse that just in case I ever need to fight them again? Fucking of course you have that lying around like a psychopath. And that was just a waiting invitation, obviously, for Carnage to acquire it and absorb it. So those are the big changes made before we move on into this new run. This new run kept every major change except the the way that Venom and Dylan came together. Um, It starts off with Halloween and them in their run, um, picking up off the heels, keeping all of it. But in their version, Eddie didn't want Dylan to pick up the symbiote, but he did. Um, right, he he was forced to to save him. That's the only change that they've made. This first volume is absolutely bonkers. You have Al Ewing, you have Ram V in here, two incredible writers. You have Ram writing the stories that we start out from Dylan's perspective. You have Al writing things from Eddie's perspective. So it's a lot of back and forth on who's writing throughout of it. You have this crazy conspiracy theory, this group called the Absent Throne, this garden at the end of time that that eddie somehow gets propelled to like the end of time right like mm-hmm. kang is involved kind of end of time kang nonsense gang, baby. is going on 
right? All right, Eddie's come a very long way from being a man who's just a busted up reporter mm -hmm. in New York and then going to San Francisco to be a hero, right? He has come a long way because he now doesn't even have a fucking body. <laughs> yeah. His body's blown up. Eddie is now just eternal consciousness by teleporting through time throughout symbiote matter, just hopping yeah. into it to use as a body and trying to navigate what does it mean to be a god now that he has ascended for all intents and purposes, right? Uh, you have Dylan back on Earth trying to pick up the pieces, learn what it means to be Venom in the middle of being attacked by this organization who's poking and prodding him, trying to force the Venom symbiote to evolve. I, through putting it under crazy testing, fire, burning, shock therapy, sound, like sound, crazy sound waves. They mm -hmm. are literally torching a child and the symbiote that's attached to it just to try to force it to evolve, just to poke mm -hmm. the bear. Which that, it. that brings me, that brings up a question in my mind, and you can uh, give some more context to this, but isn't that pretty much what the maker was trying to do in Kate's run with Eddie? Oh shit! I was say the when, the way you just described that, it sounds like that's exactly what the maker was doing. So, are we thinking that this organization could have some ties to our old friend Reed? If it doesn't, I'm gonna be mad because I, I'm gl I'm I'm glad you've mentioned that. I've say, was that a good that catch or what? <laughs> I've been I thinking that for a while. Man, I get chills. <laughs> yeah, I it's the maker in Kate's run. I was studying the symbiotes to see how he could craft and evolve his own in a hopeful attempt to save his universe because mm -hmm. it's been a large part of it and parts of it were taken over by sims it, he's from the ultimate universe originally just so y'all know mm -hmm. um as as listeners and readers and uh or in viewers so it's yeah i i definitely think he could be i i'm gonna be Let's surprised go. if he's not i mean I we know we know like maker's what? coming back for sure he better be in some form or, i mean i think he is for sure he i would be. i would put my money on it what do you say cap I've got a question for you. Right. So, you know, uh, Null is the only Null in the universe. Mm hmm Like, do you reckon is he god of the symbiotes in the ultimate universe, too? Does that work? I think Ooh. so. Because so, like, Null, ultimate was, version? Null was god of the symbiotes in, in the ultimate adjacent universe we went to in Venom Beyond. Right? Where... Yeah, because there's only one Null, isn't there? Like, yeah, and that's... No... that's kind of the consensus is that there's one null that reaches across all universes we could be wrong on that there could be separate nulls but it it seems so far uh, the community seems to to agree that there's one null for all of it um, i kind of like that, that we, i think yeah we could be wrong there could be one in each but it seems like it's the same null across all universes like there's one kang Right, yeah. there are infinite Kangs, yeah. but there is one Kang, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and it's yeah. uh, I, I think it's a similar concept. I like that idea, honestly. Like Null, like you said, there's one Null, and he transcends universes. And I don't know, I, I think that idea is really cool because it just kind of shows the power level of Null. You get what I mean? Well, and yeah. some evidence for that, just so y'all have some backstory, is Null existed before everything else in the known Marvel universe, before mm -hmm. it had to be killed, reset, turned into other universes, all the changes. He existed before all of it, and he has existed through all of it. So right? did he so did he exist before like eternity and entropy and all that? Who created eternity and entropy? Tell me. You tell me. The one of the Eternals. Was it the Eternals? Was it the Celestials? Where they come from? I'll Neither. Say, uh, yeah, I say they created Celestials and Eternals. Okay, so I think he would be within the same boat of the fact that if they created Celestials and Celestials created all other life, I think he would fall in the same level of precursor being as Eternity in them. Right? Okay. He existed in the blackness back when it was just the void, okay. and and he's sleeping, and all of a sudden he feels pain. Because mm -hmm. he believes the black, everything black is his, the void. 
And all of a sudden, these celestials are using light to carve life into the universe, making mm -hmm. planets, making making different the, the three major races, right, and everything going after it out there. And he's just like, dude, what the fuck? I was sleeping. Who's <laughs> yeah. in my home? Who's attacking mm -hmm. me in my home? So Null then goes on a rampage, um, creates a war against the the Celestials, which mm -hmm. he he's he's doing great in, by the way. Nowhere exists because of Null. Mm -hmm. um, Null created All Black the Necrosword by pulling symbiotes, his first children, out of his body, and he forged them into a sword um called all black the necro sword and it said that part of the reason symbiotes today fear sound and fire can hurt them is because the earliest symbiotes remember the forge and the clang through their memory notice some of the newer ones don't get hurt by fire they don't have that memory yeah man Hell big yeah. break play Big um, and Connection. so he takes that sword and goes into war and just starts slicing celestial heads off. And and eventually he acquires enough of them that, that he uses them when he attacks in King and Black. When he arrives, there's like a half dozen celestials that are just covered in symbiote matter at his disposal. Which was he one walks of the out of one things. piloting it like a fucking mech, right? Just like, you really think you can challenge me? Like, I pilot one of these for funsies on a Tuesday. Dude, that was so cool. That was probably my favorite moment of the King and Black event. Like, that was just so cool. Same. Yeah, there's, he was piloting Celestials, but he wasn't expecting Steve Rogers to be standing there. <laughs> no, <sir. laughs> he didn't account for Steve. Steve Rogers just stands there. He doesn't care. He's like, Celestials, this sucks. All right, let's yeah, go. Let's go. Right. <laughs> yeah, man. Typical Tuesday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, just another Tuesday. So like I said, this whole first volume is nuts. It's all all of us, you know, just trying to figure out what is it. And even Eddie at one point asked Meredith, are you like Noel? Are you him? And to which Meredith responds, no, my friend, I'm not Noel, but I am a king in black. In fact, we all are. All the symbiotes that, that are chilling at the end of time in this garden, whether it be Bedlam or any of the others wild, are all other kings in black, according to Meredith, mm -hmm. which is crazy. And it prompted me at the time to make a tweet where I said something and I tagged Ram V in it talking about how I found it interesting that the only symbiote at the end of time that we knew of that had a physical host was Eddie Brock. Where are the others? Because it's a major key that forced evolution, the symbiotes is going on, right? Whether it's in the Carnage story, whether it's in the symbiote story, right? Mm -hmm. That's a key. And it's a it's a it's a theme that that these symbiotes don't necessarily need a host right now either, right? Eddie is a host, but for all intents and purposes, is borderline a symbiote on his own, right? He's yeah. more than both. Mm -hmm. I he's he's a god. He's more than both, but is more symbiote than man. Yeah. And and he doesn't necessarily need a host. He just needs something to pop into, mm -hmm. right? I whether it's dormant or not. Yeah. And. I was like, hey, what's up with this? And he liked it. And he's like, y'all just wait and find out. Boy, we did we out. find out. <laughs> this I was second saying, we volume found has out. been nuts. This second volume has been about Eddie finding answers, mm -hmm. right, of what's going on in space. And the more we find out, the more confusing it gets. It's him trying to navigate through time and, and learn how to do that through the time stream and learn his powers it has Kang involved where he meets Kang and Kang is teaching him lessons uh, and he thinks Kang's his friend, but it turns out Kang is working on a ploy from Meredith. And then now we're going to get into huge spoilers for an issue just came out two weeks ago from us writing, from us recording this right now. Meredith is Eddie Brock. They are all Eddie Brock. They're all I, Eddie. They are all different versions of Eddie in time. And if you read issue 10, the way it's wrote with the art, you can pair it alongside issues like five on, right, through different scenes. And it lines up perfectly from different perspectives on what's mm -hmm. going to happen. It is the infinite Eddie Brock. And they are all different versions of Eddie at different, like, grieving cycles or processing emotion cycles, right? Wild is crazy, I am in broken. Bedlam is just insane and pure Brock rage. I in nine where we find out it's him killing his son. Mm -hmm. I, Dude, yeah. such mind blowing reveal. And we were talking about this before we started recording, but we 
kind of called it but didn't call it at the same time when we when the i want to say it was like maybe two three issues in i think when uh when the fake the fake eddie came to dylan and he was like you know that's not your dad or you know whatever the hell happens yeah. and we were and i was like bro i think meredith might be eddie bro i think he might be eddie brock and you're like ah i don't know he's definitely related you know their uh, motivations are definitely aligned and like you said we were both right but we didn't know how deep that actually went and like the reveal of all those other sims being also being Eddie but like you said at different points of I guess his emotional state was my literally blew my mind and like I said before it really reminded me this whole these uh these 10 issues for, for these two volumes really reminds me of like a really good like mystery series like you'd watch on Netflix or something where it's like every episode and or every issue you kind of get deeper into this mystery and at first you're like dude i don't even know what's going on like you know i'm a little confused here but once you get to 10 it just everything comes full circle and like after reading 10 i was like oh my god i need to go back and read all of these issues over again like knowing what i know now it's just like i said it really just brings everything together for me and i think for the people uh, I want to say for the people that were kind of hesitant on this series and thought that the story was taking a little bit uh, longer to kind of get going I really really urge you to go back and read read through issue 10 and then come back and see how you feel after that because I think that Ram and everyone on the team they did a really great job of laying those breadcrumbs out and then having it all come full circle and not only full circle but leaves it open too for many more things to be answered like it's not everything doesn't get answered in this issue but it gives you enough answers to like i mean for lack of a better word blow your freaking mind because i was like blown away <laughs> <laughs> yeah Cap, what do you think you just finished it i um exactly what Paul was saying it's just insane like i wasn't expecting half this i wasn't expecting bedlam to be eddie I wasn't expecting Meredith to be Eddie. I wasn't expecting Meredith to ask Eddie to kill Dylan. It's just everything is nuts. Yeah. Yeah. I do have to say, though. It's so well written. Yeah, absolutely. I was just going to say just really quickly, I the one criticism I do have and the one thing I am a little disappointed in, I want the chains back, baby. Come on. What happened to Venom with the chains? Like, I love that. I thought that, I mean, I get it's like a tongue in cheek kind of thing, like with the whole, you know, 90s art and all that. But I thought that was awesome. That was, it was funny. It was cool. I want to see the chains back. Well, and to be fair, we haven't really gotten much of Dylan getting to be Venom. He became Venom and he immediately came under attack. Mm -hmm. I Right? Like he didn't ask for any of this. Uh, he had everything relating to, you know, Null ripped out of his body at the end of King in Black, making him a blank slate, a normal freaking human. And and then all of a sudden, now he's Venom again because he has to be to save his life, but it instantly opens him up for attack. Mm-hmm. Normal childhood is gone, right? Just- yeah. I'm, I'm still a little bit curious as to why Eddie asked Dylan not to bomb with Venom. Mm. Yeah, I, I I am too, and I think a lot of the community was, because like I said, at the end of King in Black, you know, uh, uh, Eddie tells him the safest place he could be is with the symbiote, and he's proud of him, right? Um, but they started it off with him asking not to in this run, and I, I think part of that is just paternal instinct, right? Mm-hmm. It's Eddie being far more fatherly than, than we expected out of him with it, right? Don't bond with the symbiote. I just want you to have a normal fucking childhood, right? Your life has been not normal Mm -hmm. thus far. Let's give you a normal one, right? He's very paternal in, in, in a lot of ways that, that Eddie's grown up a lot. I feel like in the last, since 2018, Eddie has grown considerably. Bro, Some Um, of the biggest character growth of any character, I would say. Same. And I'm very biased. I was just about to say when we were talking about it, like, you know, he we're talking how he's this God now and how, he, you know, he's time traveling and shit. If you if you had a time machine and you went back and told someone or yourself like back in the 90s, like, hey, you know, Venom, like 
Eddie Brock, like in a couple years, he's going to be like a freaking symbiote God and shit. I would be like, what are you talking about, dude? Like he's a, you know, salty reporter that is out for Spider-Man. Like he was very one dimensional and it's like, no, no, man. Growth. He's like, he's like Kang level, dude. Yeah, he just exactly. Know it yet. Yeah. He's like borderline a Kang level entity. You'd be like, bro, um, come on, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> which he is. That's not just me yeah. being crazy listeners. No. He's borderline a Kang level entity just without mm. the mastery of it all. Exactly. I, yeah. So, yeah, like I said, the growth that he's been on, both Eddie Brock and the symbiotes in general, we've talked about this before. For a long, long time, we all thought that, you know, Spider Man was responsible for the symbiotes coming to Earth. But we learned that that is not at all true, that they've been here for thousands and thousands of years. So, like I said, both Eddie and the symbiotes in general, I think, have had one of the biggest growths of like character or character concept in modern comics at least in my opinion well and i think it was archit earlier who asked about if there was someone on the avengers we'd want to to bond with a symbiote or a spider mm-hmm. person i don't want a spider person to have to be bound with a symbiote again i don't think i mm-hmm. i'm enjoying them being separated as a symbiote yeah. thing look how big the symbiotes have gotten now that they're not tied to the spider people and look how much weight has been lifted off their shoulders knowing that the Sp- spider-man peter parker didn't bring the symbiote or yeah. symbiotes were already here he's not responsible for that that's not a burden that they have to worry about mm-hmm. i yeah and I, it takes them out of that box like to me yeah. keeping them with the spider fam like don't get me wrong i love a good venom spidey like it's a dream team for me. I We've talked about this before. I was a huge fan of the 90 animated series, which featured Venom heavily. So like I said, I love Spidey and Venom together. Don't get me wrong. But I think having uh, Eddie and or the symbiotes being stuck with Spider-Man or the Spider-Fam is just very limited to them. And like we were just talking about, they've the concept of symbiotes has grown so much. To have them be stuck in that spider box, I think is not fair to either spider-man or the symbiotes so they, I, I think there's just so many better bigger stories to be told that don't need spider-man i i think we're in our birth of bucky era um yes. right in in the hey it's not your fault mm-hmm. right it's it's not your fault yeah you were the winter soldier but it's not your fault right we just had that whole moment with with peter yeah you brought venom specifically here but like dude they were already here it's not your fault yeah right yeah mm-hmm. we're in our yeah, we're in our didn't, free the burdens didn't wolverine have a interaction with symbiotes back in vietnam yeah they Was did um, in a in yeah. there's a, a one-shot road <clears throat> called venom um by donny cates and it's a story of rex strickland um, and how he was one of the first people experimented on by S.H.I.E.L.D., his entire squadron, mostly um, African-Americans, by the way, who were experimented on by Nick Fury and S.H.I.E.L.D. and had parts of the symbiote dragon frozen in ice from Null injected into their veins to try to change them and make super soldiers. Um, and that's what turned Rex Strickland into... A symbiote warrior um they called him the t-rex um and he was a savage man um absolutely saved wolverine's life um rex strickland died in vietnam what came back was the symbiote riding his body and taking up arms as a soldier in the u.s military and, and with shield to to protect the country and the world I, and, and do secret espionage stuff, meaning that, that Nick Fury's had someone who's a symbiote on his, at his disposal and command since Vietnam doing stuff for like at least 30 years and nobody knew about it. And that brings a question to me, Gorgon. Is so is was that something new that Rex was able to? I mean, I'm sure like other symbiotes could do it, but we didn't know it at that time. But the fact that he was able to use a dead host and carry on, that's like, that was kind of a new idea at the time, right? That yeah, right. I mean, we saw it happen. That. We saw it happen in first host with Sleeper, where he mm-hmm. lobotomized a host, right? But it's yeah, not yeah. a dead host at that time. He's riding around. Mm-hmm. Eventually, Keltar was dead, um, and that's very hard for for a symbiote to do: ride a dead host because yeah. they constantly need sustenance. They need it to be mm-hmm. living, right? Um, so it was it was very hard 
for for the Rex symbiote to to do for a long time. There at the end where we see it with Eddie, we can tell it's kind of weaker, yeah. right? Like it's yeah, it was the alpha because it was older, but it's it was weaker because mm-hmm. it it hadn't had all the necessary things to be able to flex its full power for a while. So it definitely takes a toll on a symbiote not having a living host mm-hmm. when it needs a host. So I want to ask Gorgon, this is another question that we got from the Twitter. And I really, I mean, I we're about to get into our tinfoil hat theories here. So to kind of kick that off, we got a question from Eric, the homie Eric. We love Eric and his question for you specifically. So this is a Gorgon special question. He says, last Gorgon, what is your spiciest symbiote take? Not only what is your spiciest take, but what is uh, what's your spiciest take that you think shouldn't be spicy? Like most people think that it's kind of a hot take, but you think it shouldn't be. God, you're asking me to <laughs> piss off the hot. Um, hey, bro, it's all in love. It's all in love. There's no need for Null to come back. Oh, um, I think that's oh, my spiciest whoa, one that's gonna. Whoa, whoa. Oh, can I we roll that back the there? <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. God is coming. So God's not coming, Gorgon? Is that what to you're saying? To you, God is coming. <laughs> I don't think there's a reason for, for Null to come back in the comics at this current time. We have too much going on. We have this seventh Brock, right? Or maybe not Brock, seventh Venom. We don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, coming, probably a Brock, because um, it would fit the theme of the rest of them right i in the future i there's there's all this stuff with meredith i i we haven't even got dylan to be able to really be venom and be a hero yet i yeah i don't think it's necessary for null to come back at this current time let us have two three more volumes at least in this run before we try to resurrect this god I right and bring him back and and yeah I I know the hive is like we need him right now we need <laughs> null again null daddy let's get null and there it is the power combo oh my god I I get it I null is an incredible character I just don't think we need null back right now I I think sometimes a god needs to be dead mm-hmm. in order to let the big picture grow yeah, I mean, I got to say, I like, it. Is, I like it. Yeah, that's definitely not what I was expecting coming from you, Mr. God is coming. But yeah. Yeah. I, I got to say, not being, you know, the sim guy of the group, but I 100% agree with you. I love Noel. I think he's one of the probably better, probably best, one of the best villains that we've gotten in the last like 10 years of comics. But I think that, like you were saying, to bring him back so soon would, at least in my opinion, kind of take away from the threat that he was, if that makes sense. Like, no, 100%. to me, like, Noel was such a big threat and such a huge villain that if he were to just come back, like, right away, to me, it kind of takes away of what the stakes were in King and Black and like the the final moment of like Eddie beating him and all that I feel would be a lot more underwhelming if you would if he just like comes back don't I think he'll be back eventually I mean it's comics no one is ever gone forever well he has to be exactly but I think we need time <laughs> at least in my opinion we need time to feel the effects of king and black and feel the effects of Noel, like the after effects of him well my other his second part was a take that shouldn't be spicy mm-hmm. um i i think we need i think we need more symbiote stories in comics right now i symbiotes are bigger than better than ever i mm-hmm. don't think it should be a spicy take i uh, you have bren waters walters can't remember his last name who's a freaking teenager running around with toxin i uh, we haven't seen him since extreme carnage mm-hmm. where you at bren what's going on with you and toxie buddy i want to see Brandon? that character growth that development i thought you were yeah. going to be a hero where are you at what's going on yeah. i i need some deets andy yeah. benton is is now freaking running around you did it you segued me that's it it's time it's time Let's go I, is it time I think we'll have theory. I, andy <clears throat> benton is now running around 
with silence, which is this, <laughs> this crazy symbiote, right? That, that has these crazy powers. I, we need more of her. I, she's the only person who's ever been a host as a teenager. How come she's not leading these new young teenage hosts? That doesn't make any sense. I, we have all this evolution going on with Carnage right now. Carnage has ganked these crazy heroes to change its own DNA so it can go try to kill Malekith, this god, but why? How did, how did Cletus and Carnage learn all this information. Cletus exists outside of Carnage now as its own symbiote. There's like two Carnages running around, right? If that can happen and we thought he was dead, how come we can't have, have Scream come back alive even if we thought she was dead? Let's give Scream another host. Let's give Toxin his run. What happened with Agony and Gemma? right? They ran off to go do crazy stuff in Villains for Hire. Where are they now? I have a lot of questions. I need more symbiotes. Symbiotes are taking over. Let them take over. Yes. I, we're about to get Sleeper back with Hank, right? Ideally, as the host in the very next issue. So we have Sleeper. We have a host with him that wasn't even aware it was a host, by the way. That's crazy, right? That Sleeper didn't even make sure Hank knew that he was a host to this thing. It's just chaos i need a little bit more structure in my chaos and the only solution is more chaos yes yes everything <laughs> yes to everything you just said i am on board let's go more sims everywhere let's go i am ready <laughs> i they say you know we got a cover that looks like a codex is coming back and and that has yes. the hive really just blown super shocked right now i because it's we thought Codex was something that only happened if Null succeeded mm -hmm. and Dylan ascended, right? Well, and it's it's a variant cover, so we don't know if Codex is actually coming back because it's just a variant cover, right? Variants can mean anything in the land of comics. Fun. But it's from Ryan Stegman, and it's from Which... and it it's it's newer art. That we haven't seen for Codex wielding mm -hmm. all black the Necro Sword. I was just about to say, and he's wielding all black, which he never did in the run, right? Correct. I that that was the end goal. So it's the hive is kind of shooken up right now because if Codex can come, maybe maybe it was inevitable, right? Maybe the mm -hmm. trade-off was always going to be either Dylan ascends and becomes Codex, or Eddie ascends and becomes Meredith. Right, that the trade-off was inevitable. It was going to go one of two ways, uh, regardless of how we wanted it. Carnage was going to take over the world and had to be stopped. And in stopping yeah. him, it meant that Null was coming. Yeah. So then that left only two options. Either Null wins or Null loses. But what's the fallout? And it feels like the fallout was inevitable, bad options. Mm -hmm. We get Codex or we get Meredith. But in all this timey-wimey teleport through time host new body crazy power stuff maybe there's a chance that there's a a, a form of dylan that still becomes codex that we could see up here maybe that mm -hmm. is the seventh i don't know well i just had an idea and let me know if so did cap i would say cap you go first i want to hear yours i um right so you know the way the six brocks that are in the garden are all eddie mm -hmm. and this seventh brock isn't in the garden what if it's not Eddie, but it's Dylan? Oh, exactly. exactly, boom. Bro. I love exactly. that. I love it. Bro, what yes. is he? Big brain on cap. He is Codex is the seventh. Exactly, bro. And that kind of leads into my revelation <clears throat> that I want to ask. So I was just thinking, we're just talking about this, and we were just talking about the kind of confusion of Eddie not wanting Dylan to bond with Venom. What if that's why? What if Eddie somehow knows, like you said, like we thought Codex was gone, but what if he knows that there's still a potential for Dylan to become Codex and that's why he didn't want him to bond with Venom in the first place because he knows it will lead to Codex's return. Is that like, is that, is that completely off base or what? I thought I mean it was kind of good. I think it's good. I think it might be a little off base because in order for Codex to exist, Null, Null has to exist. Okay. Right. And and Eddie reached into Dylan at the end of King and Black with with the the Enigma Force, <laughs> pulled out everything from Null and obliterated it. Right. Okay. Stripped it from his DNA and left him free. Right. Mm -hmm. Setting him up for freedom, which is obviously gone. 
right? Mm -hmm. It feels like that's the big picture Ram and Al focused on when being like, no, we don't want you to bond, right? Is mm -hmm. the freedom that was given. Cool. I'm into that. Super into that. But I, if Codex can come back, it means there has to be a null and null can come back. And I don't see why not. We need him eventually. I just mm -hmm. don't know if it needs to be now. What if he doesn't want Dylan to bond with Venom because Venom still has a part of Null in him. Gorgon? Is, is that possible? I suppose, yes, because the, the symbiotes do all come from Null. Now, mm -hmm. Eddie did free a bunch of the symbiotes, right, and gave a lot of them freedom from the hive. Cut them off, let them be free. One of them being Venom. Mm -hmm. Um. So... As much as I want to say no, what we've learned about empty hives and hive adjacent things from silence is a lot from mm -hmm. the very little we've had of her. And I feel like there's a lot of gray area there to play around with. Mm -hmm. I, I almost wonder if silence's existence will somehow be what spurs a recurgence of null because of what she can do in the gray areas in between, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. I, I, Ken Foyle had again, <laughs> Bitten is the future of symbiotes, man. Her and Silence are crazy and need to be more explored. Mm. I, why are we not doing this? I, Ram, on, if Ram. you're listening to Ram, this, please. I, I love you. It took you two volumes to give me Sleeper and Hank, and I have been so patient. And I will be patient for two more volumes if it means I get more Andy and Silence content. But I need it. I need it. <laughs> just hook them up just hook them up ram oh my God. but that yeah. kind of uh, that kind of leads me to another question which again this is more so just asking your explanation on it i guess so you were just saying like codex cannot exist without null right so and since null is defeated then <clears throat> like where it stands right now we shouldn't have a codex right correct so my question though is i i like i know that eddie isn't null like they're you know no, like we just were talking about null is like a primal force of the universe almost but eddie is king in black now so would it be possible like i said i don't really understand the whole how like null and codex like how you know one has to be there for the other but since eddie is the king in black could he be the one to transform Dylan into Codex, I guess is what I'm saying. And it would no, kind of... Right. You're, you're exactly right. I yeah, think you're right. Time... I don't think we need Null for Codex. Or and... Null for Codex. I yeah. think you're exactly right. And I, the idea I too age. being that like, like we see in this volume, at least in my opinion, it seems like a big theme of it is eddie is doing this to himself like he's not doing this to himself like purposely but it, like at the end of issue 10 I mean, he's he like is. exactly he and he's like doing this to himself <laughs> but you get what i mean and i think it would be cool idea if like you said if we do get codex and to learn that eddie is also responsible for that like he's been responsible for all of this and he oh, you're and right he, and it would I add to exactly his like, right. kind of it would add to his guilt of what he's done to dylan and like i feel like a big theme of this arc has been like how do i save dylan like how do i keep him safe and then we realize he could never keep him safe because it was him all along that was putting him through this i think you're right i don't think we need null i think it was we needed the king in black in order to make codex right mm -hmm. you needed the king in black to give dylan some power so he could ascend and, and do his thing, right? Mm -hmm. and, and have his connection to the to the God Hive yeah. to do all of his nonsense. Mm -hmm. Right. I yeah, I I think you're exactly right. I don't I think you're right. I don't think we need null to make a codex. I think we just need that connection back to the God Hive and extra yeah. power given to Dylan and theoretically any King in Black could do that. Why would Eddie do that? He didn't want him to, but what if it's not Eddie, Eddie, it's a different Eddie that does it. Exactly. Right? Meredith, mm -hmm. I exactly, do it. Bro. Yeah, exactly. no, I, I think you're super onto something. Hell yeah. I'm so glad that that didn't come off as like, bro, that's fucking stupid. And like, here's why. <laughs> no, I think you're onto something. Like, I'm over here just like in my third world right now, just like, fuck, what if hey. he turns his son into <laughs> Codex? Damn. Cut the check, Marvel. That, Ram V, I'm that available. Actually, that brings up my question, too. 
So the garden is essentially a cage, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, yeah, it is right? essentially a Clintar within itself. So what if Eddie needs Codex to free him from the garden slash cage like Carnage or Null needed Carnage? I'm sorry, but I'm, I can literally see the wheels turning in Gorgon's <laughs> head right now, and it's just, it is so great. <laughs> no, because you're, you're, I think you're super onto something. Like, I, we had that, we had that whole moment at the end of two where they're talking about this is a cage of my own creation, right? I, in a cage of my own design, yet Eddie can leave the cage, but he is still eternally bound to the cage. He has to come back, but you're exactly. I think you two guys are onto something I didn't even see. I I am going to be stressing Ooh. on this all day long. Y'all <laughs> don't even go. know because you're right. Because prior to having all this strip, Dylan had these powers that only we'd seen before with Null, mm -hmm. where he could take symbiote matter and create a portal and walk across like space time and and remote pilot another mm -hmm. symbiote, which he did with with uh, Venom um, on on the island right mm -hmm. arc uh from yeah. donny hates and then he turned venom into a t-rex to fight off carnage to save his dad and it was nuts and beautiful so cool right i yeah i maybe you're exactly right maybe we need god tier dylan back in the fold in order to free his dad which would make exact sense why if the seventh is coming the seventh isn't normal venom it's in an eddie it's dylan venom evolved i sir i think you two guys might have seen something i didn't even see all right Let's this go, goes baby. to cap now this goes to cap <laughs> yeah. I... so you can have both of ours i think uh... you guys are onto something Let's go. Let's go, dude. Come on, Ram. Give us a call. Facts. Yeah, I think you guys nailed it. I, I'm so proud. I, I, you Did we make are, you proud, Papa? You guys are into the conspiracy theory land of symbiotes. I, for all of you listeners and viewers out there, I want you all to know this is exactly... I, I have to say, I feel like the symbiote fandom, the hive, as we call it, is is far more into the conspiracy theories about what if and where are we headed than any other fandom within marvel comics on twitter and right. i i might be crazy and biased to say that but i think the the theories and the extent that we go to on them is so extreme compared to even x-men twitter which gets some pretty nut stuff out there oh, i yeah. think we are beyond that and i am so happy to see you guys jumping into that just full on <laughs> oh dude i am on board i am on board waving the venom flag i'm let's go and it's been carnage too we didn't get a lot of time to talk about carnage but carnage is also really really good i'm only i've only read the first two issues so i am behind on it but again super super good and carnage as a character is just freaking I, I love Carnage. I think he's a great character. So inevitably, these runs are going to overlap, mm -hmm. right? Because Ram B's writing Carnage at, at the exact same time. Um, and spoilers for you guys. Um, Carnage is on this path to kill Malicus and, and not only kill him, absorb his powers into him and become this king of Hel Helheim and all that stuff. Which I'm he's so already taken excited over these like. He's already taken over some crazy rare dogs that are only born once every however many years in Niflheim, mm -hmm. right? They normally kill people and turn them into carnage mutts. I left oh. all the bodies on a pike. I Carnage so exists excited. without Cletus, but there's a cop that Cletus helps or that, that Carnage helps save. And within that cop, he specifically left <clears throat> Cletus. <laughs> Cletus is now acting as a symbiote in this cough, but only like half of it, right? Half mm -hmm. of his body, one eye glows, like, yeah, it's crazy. And and it's on this, like, is he going to be a hero? Is he not? I don't think he fully is because it's it's Cletus, I'll right? Say, I yeah. think Cletus has intent, but Cletus is its own entity now, mm -hmm. uh, separate from Carnage, I uh, as a symbiote. And I think that's super cool that yeah. there are two of them now. That's super super i think there's more i wouldn't say more but there's just as much interesting stuff going on with carnage as there is with the main venom kind of title like there's a lot of interesting things going on there i think it's the biggest difference is carnage is 
force evolving itself intently mm -hmm. for a purpose as opposed to brock is force evolving himself and venom but he's not aware of why yet because yeah. he hasn't became meritus yet to understand mm -hmm. why meritus is doing all this yeah right as opposed to carnage has a plan created by cletus mm -hmm. so now it's a race between cletus as the symbiote and carnage as a symbiote for who can finish the plan first mm -hmm. but my big question is how the fuck does cletus know so much about Niflheim and Helheim yes. and all these crazy powers of Malekith when these dogs are going to be born how they came about like mm -hmm. how the fuck which y'all know, know all that which y'all know obviously that's all in my wheelhouse Niflheim <laughs> you know the dark uh dark elves and all that so I cannot wait to get to that it's out right it started right like he's yeah episode or and... issue six just came out um okay. the, just just this last week yeah, I can't wait. And uh, to add on to what you're saying, though, my question, I guess, would be, uh, couldn't Cletus have gotten that knowledge from Carnage, like from them being bonded, just because like symbiotes that we were just talking about, they've been around for thousands and thousands of years. And he, again, correct me if I'm wrong, he was attached to the hive at one point, right? So he would have the hive knowledge or no? Uh, he has knowledge of the hive. And was attached to Null, but it looks like Venom was the one who was originally direct attached, and Carnage is an yeah. offspring of him, it, so it's like mm -hmm. secondhand knowledge. That was my question. Does he yeah. still have the same, like, you know, uh, I guess, like, sim knowledge, like the hive mind, or is he kind of and offshoot I, because he's an offspring? And I think it's like an offshoot, and I could be wrong on that, though. I could mm -hmm. be, but it's the, the what, what concerns me is I would have I would have thought that if they said that it was Carnage's idea, but they didn't. They said it, it was, was Cletus's, Cletus's idea and Cletus's plan. Mm. So what was Cletus doing on the side, right? I I feel like Ram's setting up for something big the same mm. way he's done here in Venom, and I feel like the two are eventually going to overlap. You just mentioned yourself that this is all more in Thorland with your wheelhouse, with Niflheim mm. and stuff, and crazy story – we're about to have Venom hopping over in Thor. Yes, we uh, are. Next issue, he's coming through. So I feel like, and I could be just completely bonkers here, there's a chance that that Donny Kate's current Thor line with Venom is going to cross into this land of what's happening with Carnage and Malekith right now. Oh, I, uh, I mean, there's no doubt in my mind that it will. It To me, it just completely makes sense like how do you not sense. yeah i would say in my um, mind it's like how do you not get to that point cinnamon boots would just get crazy man <laughs> <laughs> I, I love I, cinnamon boots <laughs> i've been telling the cinnamon boats god damn it um, I, <laughs> Cinnamon, cinnamon boats crunch now part of every goo monster's delicious nutritious breakfast gorgon approved yeah man i yeah, it's uh, I've been saying for a while they're bigger than ever and better than ever, and I think they really are. And it's very in your face. We have mm. the Savage Avengers run going on right now with David Pose <clears throat> writing it, an incredible run, an incredible writer. And it's he's got Flash Thompson from his resurrection, and he's kept the fact that he can turn into a dragon form mm -hmm. um, from, from his rebirth, which is super cool. Yeah. Um, and he's added on to the anti-venom symbiote lore because it would make sense that this anti-venom came about through his memory and codex and his blood, but the symbiotes that did it were active conscious symbiotes that joined with him, as opposed mm -hmm. to before his anti-venom wasn't sentient and conscious, right? It was just a suit. Mm -hmm. um attached to his reactions i find it fascinating that since then it's now borderline sentient if they got thrown back in time and it made it go feral and in a feral state like we saw in the past and now that they're back in the future he's he's got back to his agent venom form and it's it's interesting that that his symbiote's a little more reactive with him and conscious than it was before i like what he's doing i mm -hmm. feel like there will come a time where they're all back together yeah. But like I said, listeners and watchers, symbiotes are bigger and better than ever. I Eddie Brock is God and doing timey wimey stuff next to Kang. And there's different versions of him throughout time. We are in the infinite Eddie Brock era. I if you guys have been sleeping on this run, 
please don't because it yes. has us losing our mind just trying to even comprehend it to have a a, a coherent podcast about it in a conversation <laughs> with you guys right now i can only imagine and what it would do to you guys <clears throat> at home to sit down and just binge these two volumes for the first time yeah absolutely i couldn't have said it any better myself gorgon this future of sims in my opinion is brighter than it ever has been they are getting deeper and more complex in the best ways possible in my opinion and i just I'm so excited to see what's to come. It just feels like they they have the potential to touch every corner of the Marvel Universe. And to me, that is just super exciting. I think what Ram is doing is awesome. The mystery he's setting up and laying out for us is very compelling. Like we talked about, Kate's obviously is the you know kind of gold standard. I, but I think he is adding to that extremely well at the whole team ram the other writers artists they're continuing this story very well and like you said opening it in a way to where i think the sky's the limit really for the sims at this point i before we end off on this cap of the three of us i think when we all met you probably had the least experience reading symbiotes of the three of us um yep, 100 I feel like we have drug you into the fold and thrown you into the fires of symbiote land. <laughs> After reading all of Kate's parts of Extreme Carnage, jumping through into this, how are you, as someone who were, who who wasn't reading symbiotes before, how are you feeling about it all? Reading it now, I um I still feel like I'm very in over my head, but at the same time, I'm very excited to see where it goes. Like I have a bit of knowledge on Venom and Symbiotes from early Spider-Man days, back mm -hmm. whenever I was younger, the 95s, cartoon, Ultimate Spider-Man, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I have a wee tiny bit of knowledge based on those, but at the same time, trying to catch up and having so much lore is incredible. And seeing where, like, seeing even just how far it's come from Catron to now, it's just, leaps and bounds and it's it's very very fascinating hell yeah if it makes you feel better all of us who've been reading them have the exact same we feel like we're in over our heads <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> every one of us yeah man i think that's that's the struggle right that binds mm. us and brings us together i think that's the story of the symbiotes in itself is something we all share as readers right i that that kate's really nailed home even when we feel that we're in over our heads it's okay because we're always stronger when we're not alone and we are never alone oh yeah like that it. is beautiful i think we i think with that we got to end the episode because i don't think we can get a more beautiful sentence than that <laughs> thank you guys for coming out and listening to us today talk about symbiotes and just nerd out and putting up with our tinfoil hat nonsense. We really appreciate you guys at home. Um, thank you all for following us on all that you do. And we look forward to hanging out with you guys next time. Yeah, absolutely. If you guys like this video, please drop us a like, subscribe to the channel and leave us comments too. let us know what are your crazy sim theories? What are some of your favorite symbiote stories, favorite venom stories? Please let us know. We love talking about it. We will for sure respond to all the comments and we are always are looking to nerd out for you guys. So again, thank you guys for tuning in and we'll see you guys all next time. Been wonderful, guys. I can do this all day.